Okay, so let's start with a super quick revision of the chapter liability to pay in certain cases. Uh, this chapter goes from section number 85 to section number 94 of the CGST Act. Very simple, very small chapter. Okay, uh, now here basically there are some circumstances or there are some situations which the GST law has identified like merger, amalgamation, death, partition etc. which they have identified. And they have stated that if there is any such change in the company happening, if there is any such change in the constitution etc happening, then who will be liable to pay the GST dues, who will be liable to pay the tax liability, interest liability penalty or any other sum that is due from such taxable person. Okay, So that clarification is given in this particular chapter. First one starting with section number 85 which talks about transfer of business. So in transfer of business, they have kept it very very simple. They say that I have made the... Uh, summary notes also for you if you want. So, uh, in case of transfer of business, they are telling that till the date of transfer, okay, till the date of transfer, both of them will be liable. That is, till the day when the business gets transferred from one person to another, as on the day or before the day of transfer, uh, the transferer as well as the transferee, both of them will be liable for the same. But from the day of transfer, from the day of transfer, the old person has no role in it. Therefore, only the transferee is going to be liable for all the debts. Okay. Now, this transfer of business can be by way of sale. It can be by way of giving the business on hire or it can be by gifting my business to any other person or by, uh, by any other, maybe by leave-in license, by way of gift, etc. It doesn't matter. Okay, but till the day of transfer, the tran the taxable person that is the transferer as well as the transferee will be jointly and severally liable and uh, from the day of transfer, the only the transferee will be liable for the same and if there is any transfer of business due to death, okay, due to death of the sole proprietor, then in that case there is no uh, person, there, was, there is no transferer existing here. Therefore, only the transferee to whom the business has gone, that is the successor, only that person will be liable to pay the GST dues. Okay, wherever I am referring to GST dues here means your tax, interest, penalty or any other sum due under GST law. Okay. Then after that, the next section, section number 86, we have been studying about principal and agent since the beginning of our syllabus. So whenever any agent is supplying any goods or services or receiving any goods or services on behalf of principal, then we know when to understand that that person is the agent as per or when the transaction is a supply or when it is not a supply. Okay, suppose if the agent is normally paying the tax properly, no worries. Okay, but otherwise they have played a very safe game and they are telling that uh, if it is not able to recover from the agent then in that case principal and agent will be jointly and severally liable for that right then after that the next one that is in case of merger or amalgamation okay liability to pay in case of merger or amalgamation of the company now this is very very interesting in case of merger and amalgamation just see this diagram from the board everyone now let's say uh, the merger or amalgamation of two or more companies have happened uh, and the order has been passed by any court or tribunal on 1st April. Okay, on 1st April 2024, this order of merger or amalgamation of two or more companies have been passed. Okay, but this order is made applicable uh, or is made effective with retrospective effect. Okay, pehle se, that is from 1st Jan, means three months back, this order was effective from. Okay, so they are telling that for the purpose of liability, okay, for the purpose of liability, let's take the date of order as the date of merger or amalgamation. Okay, and if at all there were any transactions done between these two companies, okay, uh, purchasing company and selling company, if there were any transactions done between purchasing company and selling company during this particular date, then in that case, please assume as if the transaction has been done between distinct companies not distinct persons huh? the transactions has been done between distinct different companies unrelated companies so whoever is selling that person will be liable to pay the tax that way for the transactions which are happening between these two dates okay so here they will be individually respectively liable for their liabilities but from 1st april 2024 that is from the day of order now the liability is going to be of the merged company or the amalgamated company so before this before this liability is going to be respective okay during this particular period the liability is going to be respect are you understanding this 
then after that the next section that is section number 88 okay section number 88 talks about the company which goes into liquidation okay we have we had reference of this in demand and recovery chapter also whenever a company goes into liquidation then what about the gst dues of such company so they are telling that whenever a company goes into liquidation there will be a person called as liquidator who is going to be appointed this liquidator as soon as he gets appointed within 30 days of his appointment he will have to go and inform to the commissioner that sir i have been appointed as the liquidator okay as soon as he informs the commissioner from that day within three months commissioner will come and tell to the liquidator that please keep this xyz amount aside for the purpose of gst dues okay so first case is liquidator will inform to the commissioner within 30 days of his appointment and as soon as the liquidator informs the commissioner the commissioner within three months he will have to come back to the liquidator and tell him that please keep let's say for example two crore rupees aside for the purpose of gst dues are you clear with this and suppose if we are not able suppose if the assets of the company are not sufficient and if such a company which is going into liquidation is a private limited company then all the directors all the directors of the company who were there in the company during that period those directors will be jointly and severally liable okay that is the biggest disadvantage of becoming a director of a private limited company from the terms of liability only Okay, that they will be jointly and severally liable for all the liabilities of the company. Okay, but they will be uh, excused if they prove through the commissioner that it was not because of their gross neglect, it was not attributable to their breach of duty, etc. Then the commissioner may not punish them. Are you clear with this? Yes, then after that, going on to the next section, that is section number 89. Section number 89 talks about same liability of directors in case of a private limited company all uh, the, the all the directors of a private limited company who were there for a particular period for which the liability has arised all those directors will be jointly and severally liable for the liability okay and uh, but they will be excused if they prove to the commissioner that it was not attributable to their it was not because of my mistake okay it was not because of my gross neglect it was not because of my breach of duty etc but if this private limited company gets converted into public company, then in that case, then in that case, uh, it uh, the above provision will not apply. That is, every director becoming liable uh, jointly and severally, that provision is not applicable. Are you clear with this? So, that, that punishment of every director being liable is applicable only in case of a private limited company. Are you clear till here? Then after that, next one, in case of a partnership firm. Okay, in case of a partnership firm, normally who will be liable? We have been studying this since our foundation days. That in case of a firm, uh, all the all the partners, okay, first of all the firm as well as all the partners of the firm will be jointly and severally liable for all the GST dues, right? Now, what about a retiring partner? Okay, what about a retiring partner? Now, they are telling that normally a retiring partner will be liable till the date of his retirement. Okay, he will be liable to the date of his retirement provided he has intimated to the commissioner about his retirement within one month of his retirement. As soon as he has retired, within one month, he goes and communicates it to the commissioner. Okay, that sir, I have retired. Then he will be liable only till the date of his retirement. But if he does not inform within one month, then he, his liability will go on till the date he finally goes and intimates it to the commissioner. Are you understanding this? So, whenever you are retiring, make sure that you go and inform it to the commissioner within one month of your retirement. Understanding this? Yes. Then, what about the what about the case of guardian, trustees, etc.? Okay, let's say there was a minor. Okay, and for minor or on behalf of minor, everything was done by the guardian. Okay, or let's say in case of an incapacitated and unsound person. Okay, then everything was done on behalf of that unsound mind person. It was done by the sound mind person. That is the trustee or the guardian of that person. So, they are telling that if there is any GST dues recoverable from such minor or there is any GST due recoverable from such unsound mind person, then it will be recovered from their guardian, trustee, etc. Because they are responsible for everything. Right? 
then after that similarly similarly in case of liability of court of wards etc let's say if there is a taxable person okay and the estate of the taxable person assets of that taxable person is in the control of the courts or it is in the control of official trustee or it is in the control of administrator general the words are written here it is under the control of court of wards administrator general official trustee or receiver or manager means i am the taxable person but my assets are in control of the court it is under the custody of the court then in that case if there is any gst dues then it is not possible for me to pay then it will be recovered from that court of wards administrator official assignee trustee etc and right okay then next one some special cases are given that who is required to pay that liability okay now first case first one that is in case of death of a person now in case of a death of a person one thing that we had already studied that in case of succession then in that case the successor is required to pay all the gst dues acha what if the business is continued business of a deceased person is continued after his death if it is continued after his death then in that case obviously it can be continued by his legal representative legal hire or by any other person then whoever is continuing it is required to pay the taxes to the or the dues to the government okay if the business is not continued after the death of a particular person then in such case his legal representative okay the deceased person's legal representative will be liable up to what extent but only up to the extent of estate of the deceased person very simple acha now what if what if partition of a huf has taken place what if a partition of huf or aop etc has taken place then they are telling that each and every member of that huf or each and every member of that aop up to the date of partition okay up to the date of partition they will be jointly and severally liable for the gst dues okay up to the date of partition can we say this is very very logical if this is irrespective of the fact that when was the liability determined liability can be determined before partition or after partition okay but up to the date of partition they will be jointly and severally liable except as provided in the ibc means if they go for ibc then the ibc provisions will override then similarly in case of dissolution of a firm in case of dissolution of a firm who will be liable can you tell me up to the time of dissolution every person who was a partner okay every person who was a partner in such firm shall be jointly and severally liable so in partition it was up to the date of partition in case of dissolution it is up to the date of dissolution right acha what if now this is a altogether different point what if guardianship or trusteeship terminates okay what if a minor becomes a major so guardianship will come to an end okay and what if a sound mind person a unsound mind person becomes of a sound mind then in such case they are telling that then in such case they are telling that up to the ter- now later if there is any liability as soon as the guardianship or as soon as the trusteeship comes to an end okay then up to the time of termination up to the time of termination for that period also the ward or the ultimate beneficiary that is that major person or that sound mind person okay who whoever are the ultimate beneficiaries they will be liable to pay the tax okay it will be like till the time he was minor guardian was liable to pay but as soon as he becomes major okay as then for the old liability is also now he will become li- uh, liable if any such liability comes up into picture okay and similarly if there was a person of unsound mind till the time he was of unsound mind his trustee or his guardian was paying everything but as soon as he becomes of sound mind now if there is any liability pertaining to the older period also then also the sound mind person will become liable for the same not the trustee ah the actual person will become liable for the same right then last few points uh, some cases that is first one is in case of discontinuation of business in case of firm aop huf etc firm aop huf etc okay now just try to understand there is a firm partnership firm aop boi huf etc where where they say that we want to discontinue the business okay we want to we don't want to dissolve it but we want to discontinue the business then they are telling that then they are telling that uh up to the date of such discontinuance okay up to the date of such discontinuance 
every person who was a partner of that firm, every member who was a member of such HUF or AOP, they will be till the date of such discontinuance. Okay, till the date of such, such discontinuance, they will be liable for all the GST dues. Okay, whether such dues is of the period prior to discontinuance or whether it is of the period after discontinuance. Okay, doesn't matter. See, the entity is not dissolved. Na? They have just discontinued the business. So, whoever, whoever was the person involved in that entity at the time of discontinuance. Okay, at the time of discontinuance, whoever was there, whose ever name was there, those people will be jointly and severally liable. Right? And last one, in case of change in constitution of a firm or AOP. For this, we have already studied about retirement. Okay, now I am talking about uh, admission. Okay, in case there is a new partner coming in, okay, in a firm or in case of a AOP, then please be careful. Whoever is the new partner coming in, he will be liable for the old liabilities also. Means he will be also liable for the dues which existed before he became a partner and anyway he is going to be liable for all the liabilities which are going to now arise after he has become a partner. Are you clear with this? So in retirement whenever he is going inform to the commissioner. In case of admission please be very careful while coming into a firm because you will be liable even for the old liabilities. Are you, old liabilities means we are talking only about the GST liabilities, huh? GST dues. Are you clear with this? Yes. So, this was all about the chapter that is liability to pay in certain cases. So, they have just given um, different, different cases about merger, amalgamation, dissolution, partition, discontinuance of business, death, etc. That if such a thing happens, if such a thing happens, then who will be responsible for the same? Who will, Government will, should take money from whom? Right? I hope you are enjoying the lectures and if yes, please let me know in the comment section because even that motivates me a lot. Yes.